you and I have something in common. We don't know what will happen next. Sure, we all make plans for the future. Yours might be to sit and listen right now, and mine certainly is to say something worth listening to. But can we be 100% sure that this is going to happen? No. We're simply stepping into the unknown together, one moment at a time. When you're relaxed, this feels quite comfortable. You're surrounded by nice people, you feel no stress, and great. We feel stressed when we don't know what to expect, and relaxed when we do. You've probably been in situations that didn't go as planned. When you told a joke and nobody laughed. When you went on a date and were rejected by someone you liked. When you prepared a speech, stepped on stage and forget your text. We feel stressed because our expectations aren't met. What can we do when we feel stressed for a long time? In 2012, I left my career in biology to become an actor. My parents didn't see that coming. <laughs> in acting, I focused on improvisation. Improvisational theater is theater made up on the spot on stage. The improviser is the actor, script writer, and director of a show. It's a lot like life. During my transition from science to theater, it wasn't always easy. It turns out a lot of people want to become actors, and most of them are poor. I experienced many low points, often felt drained, defeated, and wanted to give up, but I never did. And I had a hunch that my training in improvisational theater had to do with it, but the scientist in me wondered, why exactly? In my search for an answer, I discovered the concept of resilience. Resilience comes from the Latin word resiliere and means to bounce back or to spring back. It's like this very soft ball. When I squeeze the ball, it feels stressed and starts deforming and losing its shape. But when I let go and the stress disappears, it bounces back to its original shape. A material that is less resilient can't bounce back that easily. When I squeeze this tin can, it will take a lot of time and effort to bring it back into shape. Our minds are either like the ball or like the tin can. When you and I suffer from long-term stress, our minds will suffer. If we are not resilient, this can lead to burnout and depression. But we can train to be more resilient. We can unlock this mental ability to bounce back quickly from burnout, stress, and misfortune. There are three ways that you can train to be more resilient. You can make changes in three different areas. You can make instrumental changes, cognitive changes, or regenerative changes. In short, doing, thinking, most effective but least popular, and relaxing. Let's start with doing. One thing you can all do is to surround yourselves with people that are good for you. Now, how do you know that somebody is good for you? There are two big indicators. Number one, that person will believe in you even if you fail. And number two, that person will cherish your ideas and empower you to take action on them. I love singing. Singing is one of my favorite things in the world. And I can remember our drama teacher from our amateur theater group who once asked me to sing a song about a firefighter. I closed my eyes, listened to the music, and started singing joyously. I didn't even get to the word fire until I heard, stop, stop, stop. Okay, you can sing. Next. I continued acting, but those words, you can sing, stayed with me. Fast forward 10 years, and I'm doing improvisational theater for a living. I'm on a comedy stage, and every once in a while, I had to sing a song. 
I remember those words, you can sing, tensed up and ruined the song. People after the shows came up to me and said, Ben, your acting's pretty good, but your singing's a disaster. Can't you get somebody else to do it for you? Please don't sing. At first I joked with them, but after a while I realized I don't like singing anymore. And worse, I stopped liking my job. One day after a particularly bad song, one of my colleagues came up to me and said, you're hopeless. And that's how I felt. Luckily, during that time, I met my beautiful wife. And when I came home, she started singing with me. Joyously, wholeheartedly, melodies and harmonies didn't matter. We even wrote little songs together, and she said, baby, you can sing, it just doesn't sound good. <laughs> All you need to do is start practicing and you'll get better at it. I relaxed. Of course, my wife put things into perspective. I took a singing teacher, started improving, my confidence came back, and today I'm starring in a musical in Cologne. Yeah. <laughs> the point is, it's easy to cheer for winners. Please also look for people who cheer you on when you feel hopeless. Those connections are valuable. In improvisational theater, connections and stories are formed with two little words, yes and. Yes and is a fundamental principle of improvisational theater. Let's imagine you come up on stage with me and we do an improvised scene together. You could start with, hey dad, and I could continue with, no, I'm not your father and the scene would likely end here. <laughs> Another example for a bad start was, would be, hey dad, hello, you look great. Yes, I do. <laughs> Seems like you're working out again. Yes, I am, and so on. We all know those people, they only say yes, but they don't give anything. It's like an energy vampire who sucks out all of your creative juices. Yes, and is different. It's taking your partner's idea and building on it, brick by brick. Now, in real life, yes and is rare. We often hear no or yes but, which is a nicer no. Yes, it's great what you told me just now, but we're not going to do it. Yes, great idea, but let me tell you what I think. Shooting down ideas is such a fun game, especially when we're the one with the gun. But it's the opposite of collaboration. In improv theater, every idea is precious. It's treated like a seed that can turn into a beautiful flower. Everyone gives and gets better at giving. This forges true bonds between people. Yes, and is co-creation. A great example about co-creation is one of the first studies about resilience. It was done by Emmy Werner and her team at UC Davis. The developmental psychologist looked at the lives of children from the Hawaiian island Kauai for 40 years. Emmy Werner was particularly interested in 210 of the children who grew up in dysfunctional families. Their parents were either abusive, sick, or very poor. Her hypothesis was that those children would grow up to not have jobs, not finish school, and develop psychological problems. But she was wrong. One third of the children were different. They finished school, found a job, and were fine later in life. What made those children bounce back after a difficult childhood? Emmy Werner found that the resilient children all had something in common. They, ha they all had one person in their network, a neighbor, a teacher, a grandparent, who told them, you are good enough. One person who believed in them. One person who told them yes and allowed them to shine. One person who helped them change their story. And that's the second thing we can do 
if we want to become more resilient. Changing our stories. But how? A while ago, I started learning Romanian. One of my colleagues in theater is from Romania, and one day we decided to do a scene in her mother tongue during a real show. It all went well until I said, Eu sunt tata teo și tu ești sora mea. I'm your father and you're my sister. <laughs> I was instantly embarrassed, blushed, but when I looked up, I saw the calm eyes of my colleague who said, Avem o relație complicat. We have a complicated relationship. <laughs> The audience laughed, and we referred to the joke later on during the show. My mistake became a strength. And history is full of mistakes that turned out to be great successes. Think about post-it notes, penicillin, pacemakers, the list goes on and on. Two people can look at exactly the same thing and see something different. The second fundamental principle of improvisational theater is there are no mistakes. Sure, there are choices that require different levels of skill to keep the story going, but there are no mistakes. When an improviser sees a mistake, he sees a beautiful opportunity to change the story. The third fundamental principle of improvisation is relaxation. I remember when I got a call a few years back, and they said, Ben, can you do stand-up comedy? We need someone urgently in two days to do 30 minutes. I had never done stand-up comedy before, but I said yes. Five minutes into my gig, I noticed why I had never done stand-up comedy before, because no one in the room had a good time, me included. Next, I noticed how I stood on stage. Shoulders hunched forward, feet inward, eyes down. I looked like a puppy dog that knows it has done something wrong. My training in improvisational theater then allowed me to go from here to here. I took a deep breath, changed my posture, and started joking with people based on the current moment. Relaxation is a fundamental principle of improvisation. Today, I work together with a resilience clinic. It's known for its holistic treatments and relaxation techniques. I talked to the founder of the clinic, who had been a doctor and has decades of experience of treating patients with burnout, overwhelm, or depression. And he told me, every once in a while, someone would step into his office and he would see that person just needs a break. So you would tell, tell them, do some ecotherapy, which is going outside. And they wouldn't do it. All the patients opted for medication instead and took the pills. So one day he had enough. He took his stack of receipts and started writing. Three times a day, 10 minutes break during working hours. One hour walk in the forest. Picnic in a park. And to his amazement, people would start doing it. All they needed was permission. The great thing about permission is you can give it to yourself. You can become your own doctor and give yourself permission to relax. Because this will activate your parasympathetic nervous system. It's the passive state. Its counterpart is the sympathetic nervous system. It's the active state. But when your system runs in overdrive, you're stressed. And when you're too relaxed, you also don't get anything done. Now, according to the American psychologist Stephen Porges, there's one hybrid state between active and passive. And that state is called play. During play, most of our nervous system is engaged, and we can comfortably stretch our comfort zones. During play, our nervous system is active and balanced, and learning can become an experience. Improvisa improvisational theater teaches you to forge true bonds between people, helps you to change your story, and leads you to relax as we're stepping together into the future. Improvisers are just like this very soft ball. They never break under pressure. 
and they're always ready to play. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.